Welcome again. This is Dr. James Patterson, a professor of English. Um, in this short video, I want to talk about when paraphrasing becomes plagiarism. Um, one of the things that researchers have found is that a lot of students commit plagiarism accidentally or unintentionally simply because they have never been trained how to correctly paraphrase. And I want to show you how that happens with an example from a student paper. Uh, let me take you into my document here on my screen. I have withheld the name of the student for this paper and the paper is on the topic of a academic dishonesty. This is the very first paragraph from this paper and that's what I wanted to look at here. The student opens this paper with information from plagiarism, facts, and statistics. Now, the, set, the student has written, the Josephson Institution Center surveyed 43,000 students from pi private and public school and found that 59% of them cheated during a test and 34% cheated more than two times. Plagiarism, facts, and statistics. Now, I am curious where the student got the number of 43,000 students. I'm curious where the student got the percentage of 59% and the percentage of 34%. It looks to me like the student has taken this information directly from the source and is quoting, not paraphrasing. So I follow the student's information and I go to plagiarism.org which has a web page called Plagiarism, Facts, and Statistics that was published in June of 2017. And I see right here in the very first paragraph what the student has cited. The Josephson Institute Center for Youth Ethics surveyed 43,000 high school students in public and private schools and found that 59% of high school students admitted cheating on a test during the last year, 34% self-reported doing it more than two times. So, because I have Windows on my computer, I'm going to overlay these two documents. And when I do that, this is what I find. The Josephson Institute Center. The student has written the Josephson Institution Center. Even though the student has misspelled institution instead of the word institute, this is still a direct quote from the web page. The student has omitted the words for youth ethics, but then picked up the same text again, surveyed 43,000. And in the student's tape paper, the student has written surveyed 43,000. Now, the published site says that these are 43,000 high school students and my student has dropped out the word high school, but is still using the word students. The published source says in public and private schools, and my student has switched them to private and public school. But now the student is quoting directly, and found that 59% of, and found that 59% of, She's changed the reference to high school students to the word them. She's taken admitted cheating and she's turned it into cheating. She's taken on a test and changed it to during a test. And 34% is quoted. She changes self-reported doing it to simply cheated. But here she picks up again with a direct quote, more than two times. In academic writing at this level, any three words or more taken directly in sequence from a source must be put in quotation marks anytime you're using a particular term or word because you're getting that word or term from a published source, put it in quotation marks. What the student has attempted to do is paraphrase this information from the web page, but she has used the exact words of the source and she has used them in the same order. She is following the organization of the published author and she is not paraphrasing. She is crossing the line into plagiarism. A couple of rules of thumb need to be pointed out here to help you avoid this type of error in the future. Number one, always remember that a paraphrase is written in your own words. So the best way to avoid this type of error is to shut off the screen, close the book, close the magazine, put your phone away, and paraphrase in your own words what the author just said in the published source. 
always then go back and check the original to make sure that you haven't changed their meaning. You're saying the same thing, but you have to use your own words to make it a paraphrase. I like to teach my students to think of a paraphrase as a parallel phrasing, but it ha still has to follow, it still has to use the student's own words. The second rule of thumb that I can give you to help you avoid this type of problem is simply this. Never try to paraphrase a sentence or two sentences that are a small piece. The fact that it is such a small piece lends itself to easily making your paraphrase overlap and follow the original text too closely so it becomes plagiarism. When you're paraphrasing, look for paraphrasing larger sections and put those sections into your own words. But just avoid paraphrasing or attempting to paraphrase when you're dealing with this short, small piece of information. Just put it in quotation marks and make sure that if it's the Josephson Institute, make sure that you call it the Josephson Institute. That's a sloppy error that could have easily been avoided by paying careful attention. So, in this video, I've just tried to talk about how paraphrasing, when done incorrectly, will cross the line into plagiarism, and I've talked about a couple of different tips that will help you avoid this mistake in your future writing. I wish you the best, and thank you.